Chapter 81 Quarantine and Community Deuteronomy Chapter 24 Verses 8 and 9 Take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou observe diligently and do according to all that the priests and the Levites shall teach you. As I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 8 and 9. This text concerns leprosy. The word as used in the Bible includes a variety of infections, one of which is the leprosy we know today. This leprosy, called Hansen's disease, was near the disappearing points before World War II. Now, especially with the influx of aliens from Southeast Asia, it's on the rise. However, even as we as a nation have rejected the biblical requirement of quarantine for AIDS, so too we have abandoned it for leprosy. One commentator has observed of our text, Primitive societies typically see diseases as a religious matter. The question is one of ultimacy. Today we are approaching a state of mind where virtually everything is a political matter. Can we honestly regard as primitive or backward those who view all things as essentially religious? Is it not being backward and primitive to see all things politically? It is an aspect of the stupidity of the modern mind that it sees nothing as wise except itself. This is provincialism of an amazing kind. This law, as do others, makes a quarantine mandatory. There always has been a tendency to relax the law where the wealthy and the powerful are concerned. God allows no such exemptions and we are reminded that not even Miriam, sister to Aaron and Moses, was spared. Moorcraft has pointed out. God identified himself as the God who separates his people from other peoples. Therefore, separation, including Christian intolerance of other religions and gods, is a basic principle of biblical law with respect to religion and morality. Warcraft is very much to the point. When God separates us to himself, more separation must follow. We then separate ourselves from evil, both moral and physical evil. Quarantine, thus, is a logical consequence in the medical sphere. Being a Christian does not make us immune to being killed by a fire or from drowning. We avoid dangers instead of courting them, and where God requires a separation, we make it. Another commentator has said that this law has as its purpose increasing the priestly power. We are told in verse 8, Do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you. All this does is to say that the priests had authority as public health officers, nothing more. The search for supposedly primitive motives and goals leads scholars to curious absurdities. The basic meaning is very different, as Kyle and Dalich so ably commented. The thought here, therefore, is, Be on thy guard because of the plague of leprosy, that is, that thou dost not get it, have to bear it, as a reward for thy rebellion against what the priests teach according to the commandment of the Lord. Watch diligently that thou do not incur the plague of leprosy, vulgate, or that thou do not sin so as to be punished with leprosy. J. H. Michaelis Leviticus chapter 13 and chapter 14 give us the laws on leprosy. This text is a reminder of those laws and a summons to take heed unto them. It is a warning not to be overconfident that one will not acquire the contagion. Infections have more than a simple physical cause. They can have a moral cause. Miriam was stricken because of her rebellion. 
To assume that a naturalistic causality marks all things is false. If God is what he says he is, the maker of heaven and earth and all things therein, he is the ultimate cause of all things and can be an immediate cause. The fact that God ordains this law means that God is telling us that our health is important. We cannot morally be justified if we abuse our bodies and play havoc with our health. From our Lord's words in Luke chapter 17 verse 14, we see that this law was still enforced in our Lord's day, as indeed it was in medieval Europe. The priests had to pronounce a heel leper clean or there would be no return to normal life. It is absurd to state, as some do, that priests then functioned as doctors. There were physicians in both Old and New Testament eras. It was a religious requirement that quarantine be instituted and also ended by the priests. Civil authorities, then and now, are governed by political considerations and, in the last quarter of the 20th century, we have seen rules of quarantine set aside for political reasons. In the Bible, however, we see Miriam, and centuries later, King Uzziah, segregated from others because of their leprosy. This religious character of quarantine provided an additional, although not infallible, check against the political abuse of the law. There's another aspect to the biblical law of quarantine, namely, membership in the community is not a right, it's a privilege. If membership is a human right, then quarantine and any form of exclusion is morally wrong. Then too, excommunication becomes a violation of a right. There can be given the premise that membership in the community is a human right, not exclusively male or female, Protestant or Catholic, whites or any other kind of exclusive organisation. Given the humanistic premise of human rights, we are seeing the rise of legal bars against exclusionary rules. John Dewey saw in A Common Faith an anti-democratic and illegitimate character in biblical Christianity because of the division of peoples into the saved and the lost, the good and the evil. It should not surprise us that quarantine laws have been dropped all over the world. If homosexuality and AIDS are not grounds for barring people from society, or from a job, or from serving food in a public eating place, then how can any form of separation and segregation in terms of faith, common loyalties or common interests be maintained? In the history of Christendom, the emphasis on community has at times extended to the dead. An excommunicated man, or a suicide for example, could not be buried in a churchyard, in hallowed ground. This seems cruel and arbitrary to the modern mind, but it simply meant that the holy community was a very serious fact to its members. This fact of community has faded for us. At one time, it had momentous meaning. Monasticism was in medieval Europe held for centuries in very high esteem because the monks prayed as representatives of the whole Christian community. Men outside the monastery knew that the monks were praying as their representatives. In the Book of Common Prayer there is, in both morning and evening prayer, a prayer for all conditions of men, a petition for the entire community. Because the community has been so important a fact over the centuries, excommunication or any form of ban was seen as a form of death. The community means life as against death. It's especially important that even the lepers of old upheld a community that barred them from membership. These lepers cried out to all who approached him, Unclean, unclean. Leviticus chapter 13 verse 45, they thereby protected the community from themselves. It was God's community and the life of their loved ones who were healthy that they safeguarded. 
Thus, even the outcast lepers protected the community, whose centre was a sanctuary and the God thereof. If God be removed from this community, there remains only a collection of random persons, unconnected and without an overriding faith and loyalty. The lepers of old who cried unclean had a greater sense of community than the godless men of our time. It should be apparent now how much modern culture has stripped man of community and of meaning. Confronted by a simple rule that indicates the implications of community and of separation or segregation, men see this as an obsolete rule of quarantine and no more. We are morally and intellectually self-impoverished. A final note. We have had a form of quarantine in the imprisonment of guilty men. The evidence indicates that this too is breaking down under the influence of humanistic equalitarianism. John Dewey's demand for the destruction of all divisiveness in society is in process of following its inner logic. If there be no good nor evil, if we are to live in a world stripped of moral discrimination, why have courts and why have prisons?